so yeah so again i read your release um but it seems like it was a pretty complicated situation several different officers involved different departments different dynamics going on so could you sort of walk me through in your words what you know right now about what happened sure so i mean generally speaking from from what i know about what happened uh, about 12 30 saturday morning on the 5th uh one of the Belfont neighbors police officers stopped a car for a traffic violation at westbound chambers and it's just east of lance and it's on uh, a downward slope from a hill on chambers uh the officer uh, uh requested assistance uh for a backup car uh mulling acres uh officer sergeant herschel walker was actually the closest person available uh, at the time uh sergeant herschel did assist him pulled in behind his police car um, there was a second Belfont neighbors police officer that was traveling to that traffic stop westbound chambers. Uh, that officer was behind a vehicle that was driving erratically. The officer tried to identify the vehicle by like getting a license plate, but wasn't able to do so. The officer um, stated that the vehicle had disappeared from view for a little bit. Uh, when the officer crested that hill on chambers westbound, um, he had observed that that car struck the Moline Acres car. And when the officer went to stop, he had to hard brake and he had a decision to maneuver left or right uh, around, the, uh, the, around the accident. Um, he noticed that Sergeant Herschel Walker was standing to the left, um, kind of in the traffic lane at that point. So the officer uh, maneuvered right into the grassy area in front of some homes. We can only um, tend to believe that uh, Sergeant uh, Turner felt that he was in danger standing in the traffic lane. So we believe that he ran into the grassy area, which would have been um, the most likely thing to do for anybody. And he ran into the path of the police car at the same time. Um, there was no way of knowing uh, that that was going to happen. And unfortunately, the police car did strike Sergeant uh, Turner. And after um, he was struck, uh, the officer driving the police car got out, uh, tried to render aid to him, and uh, held them until the, the ambulance arrived. What are you hearing that is out there right now about what happened that you want to correct? Uh, for the most part, um, I'm, I'm hearing a narrative, uh, a little bit of a narrative, not a lot. Uh, about uh, the officer in full pursuit of a vehicle. Um, I'm hearing um, things that would allude that uh, the officer uh, carelessly and recklessly uh, handled himself during um, the incident. Uh, these are things that we have not been able to confirm yet. So to assert uh, that type of belief or assumption would be considered uh, uh, unknown at this time. I can't imagine. I can't imagine how the officer must feel that was involved in this accident. I mean, have you have you been able to talk to him? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I've had had discussions with him, and in his words, there are no words. I mean, he is a, at a loss um, when he is trying to process what has happened. I know for a fact that he had told me that he became a police officer to help people, not to hurt people. And, and at the end of the day, um, he believes he is mentally broken right now because of it. And that's a pretty serious thing to say. And I believe that this is a normal reaction to, to something that is so traumatic that um, it's something that he's gonna have to live with for a very long time.